Ivan the Terrible was known as a fighter, a violent murderer, and a tyrannical ruler. But he was also a lover. Despite only having two children that survived to adulthood, Ivan had eight wives. And while two outlived him, the majority met with grisly ends. Stay tuned to hear more about the fates of the eight wives of Ivan the Terrible. Number 1. Anastasia Romanova Anastasia was born in 1530 and was the daughter of a minor Russian aristocrat known as a boyar. When Ivan was 16, a bridal fair was arranged in which the noble families of Russia were invited to present their eligible daughters for consideration of marriage to the Grand Prince of Russia. At this fair, Ivan met Anastasia, who was also 16, and the couple were married in 1547, less than a month after Ivan had been crowned Tsar of all Russia. Anastasia became the first Tsarina of Russia and the first Romanov to sit on the Russian throne. Later, her great-nephew would be the first Tsar of the Romanov dynasty. By all accounts, Ivan was totally in love with Anastasia, and she was a well-liked monarch. During his marriage to Anastasia, Ivan was a well-rounded and reasonable ruler dedicated to his country and family. Ivan and Anastasia had six children, but only the two youngest sons would survive to adulthood. In the summer of 1560, at age 30, Anastasia died of a mysterious illness, one that Ivan attributed to poison. Growing up, Ivan had a tumultuous relationship with the boyars, having seen them all vying for power after his parents' death. Ivan was devastated by Anastasia's death and blamed the boyars. Despite having no evidence that his wife had been murdered, Ivan was certain that someone had poisoned Anastasia and that he had been the intended target. Enraged, he tortured and executed a large number of the boyars as punishment. Many believe that Ivan suffered a mental collapse after his wife's death, leading him to a tyrannical and violent rule. Number 2. Maria Temrykovna Despite Ivan's devastation at Anastasia's death, he remarried a year later. Maria Temrykovna was presented to Ivan, who became enamored by her beauty. Maria was 16 when she married Ivan, who was about to turn 31. She was the daughter of a noble from the Caucasus region and was a pagan rather than orthodox Christian like Ivan. Legend has it that Anastasia warned Ivan not to take a pagan for a wife, and Maria was not popular with her subjects. She gained a reputation for being manipulative. Some even thought she was a witch. Where Anastasia brought out the pragmatic ruler in Ivan, Maria seemed to indulge his tyrannical paranoia, and many believe she encouraged her husband to form the Abrichnina, a band of brutal bodyguards that acted like secret police. Maria never really settled into her new life and, by all accounts, was a terrible stepmother to Ivan's two children. However, this may not be surprising as she was only 10 years older than Ivan's eldest. She bore one son during her eight-year marriage to Ivan, but the baby died at just six weeks. The marriage of Maria and Ivan was as turbulent as Ivan's first marriage was loving. So when Maria died at age 25 in 1569, many believe that Ivan was responsible. However, there is no evidence of this, and Ivan suspected that Maria had suffered the same fate as his first wife. Ivan's paranoia grew and again he lashed out at alleged perpetrators, torturing anyone he assumed had a hand in the death of Maria. Number 3. Marfa Sobakina Again, Ivan began to search for a wife. After a two-year process that we can only assume to be akin to the TV program The Bachelor, Ivan had whittled down his prospective brides to 12 finalists. 19-year-old Marfa was chosen, and their marriage took place on October 28, 1571. In the days leading up to the ceremony, Marfa became unwell. By the wedding day, she appeared gaunt and was having difficulty walking. Sixteen days later, she was dead. As she was the third of Ivan's wives to die of apparent poisoning, Ivan's paranoia increased exponentially, especially as Marfa was supposedly safe in Ivan's impregnable fortress filled with loyal subjects. Yet again, Ivan's wife's death was followed by executions and torture, as Ivan attempted to discover who was behind her demise and who might still be trying to eliminate him. However, far from a plot to assassinate Ivan, it is widely believed that Marfa's mother had unintentionally administered the poison in a misguided attempt to increase her daughter's fertility. Number 4. Anna Koltovskaya 
Laws of the Russian Orthodox Church forbade Ivan from taking a fourth wife. However, Ivan was adamant that, as he didn't consummate the marriage, his marriage to Marfa Sobakina didn't count. This time, he chose the 21-year-old daughter of one of his courtiers, Anna Koltovskaya. In 1572, he went ahead with the wedding without the church's blessing, perhaps thinking it would be better to ask forgiveness rather than permission. The ploy worked, and he gave an impassioned speech that moved the high-ranking members of the clergy to such an extent that they agreed to the marriage. The couple honeymooned in Novgorod, which was still recovering after Ivan had destroyed the city and massacred its citizens in 1570. Despite Ivan's apparent passion for his young bride, he grew angry that Anna had not produced children. Now in his 40s, Ivan wanted to expand his family. He had been married since he was 16, but only had two sons from his first marriage to show for it. In a break from the norm, Anna did not die of a mystery illness. Ivan banished her to a monastery in 1574, where she lived out the rest of her life as Sister Daria. Not only did Anna survive the marriage to Ivan, but she also outlived him, dying in 1626 at the age of 74. Number 5. Anna Vasilchikova Now, the orthodox rule against fourth marriages really became an issue, and no impassioned speeches could refute the fact that Ivan had been legally married three times. So, Ivan did what any man in his position would. He completely ignored the traditions of his religion and married again anyway in January 1575. Very little is known about Anna Vasilchikov, including her age and background. It is thought that she was a commoner whom Ivan chose as he hoped she would be able to bear him another heir. However, one year after their marriage, Anna failed to become pregnant, earning her a one-way trip to a monastery. Unlike the other Anna, Anna did not survive long enough to take her final vows and died around 1577. Number 6. Vasilisa Melentieva Ivan's sixth wife is the stuff of legends, literally, as there are people who believe she didn't exist and that she is merely a 19th century piece of fiction. One story goes that Vasilisa was the widow of a prince, or Dyak, called Melenti Ivanov. Another tells that she was a slave from Ukraine or Georgia. Either way, Ivan was captivated by her beauty and grace. Some believe that she was a concubine of Ivan, whom he freed and elevated to the position of queen consort. Whatever her background, Vasilisa was famous for being the only woman Ivan had loved since his beloved Anastasia's death. They married in 1579, and the Tsar was besotted with his new love. So when he found out that she was having an affair with a prince called Devleta, he felt utterly betrayed. Vasilisa was forced to watch as Ivan impaled her lover, but she got off pretty lightly and was sent to a monastery. There are no court records or graves attributed to Vasilisa, leading some to believe that she escaped the monastery and was able to live out the rest of her life in peaceful obscurity. The legend of Vasilisa inspired the 19th century painter Grigory Sedov to create his famous piece Tsar Ivan IV admires his sixth wife Vasilisa Melentieva. Vasilisa's existence is questioned, as there seem to be very few documents from that period that mention her. This may be because the church did not authorize Ivan's later marriages, or it could simply be a good story that was tacked into Ivan's legacy. Number 7. Maria del Goyakaya Scholars also debate whether Maria del Goyakaya really was a wife of Ivan, as, like Vasilisa, there are no official records of their marriage from that time. However, she does have a great story so it's worth including it. So, with three wives apparently poisoned and three sent away to nunneries, any guesses on the fate of Ivan's seventh wife? Supposedly, Maria was the descendant of Prince Yuri of Kiev, one of Moscow's founders. Ivan and Maria married in early 1580, but legend has it that Ivan discovered that his wife was not a virgin and already had a lover. This time, holy vows were deemed too lenient, and Ivan sentenced his new bride to death by drowning. Number 8. Maria Nagaya The final wife of Ivan the Terrible is definitely not fiction. Perhaps her two predecessors were invented to explain why Ivan had gone five years without getting married, as he married Maria Nagaya in 1581. Maria was 27 when she married the 51-year-old Tsar and was the daughter of Ivan's good friend, Theodore Nagoy. It seems the marriage was not a love match, as a year after the wedding, Ivan indicated to Elizabeth I of England 
that he would be willing to divorce his wife and marry her relative, Mary Hastings, to enhance trade relations with Britain. However, around the same time, Maria became pregnant, providing Ivan with his much sought after third child. Maria gave birth to a son, Dmitri, a year after Ivan had accidentally killed his only viable heir in a fit of rage. Ivan's last son with Maria was named after his first with Anastasia, who had died during infancy. Naming a child after a dead sibling was considered bad luck, but as Ivan had ignored the traditions of the Orthodox Church by marrying more than three times, he must have thrown caution to the wind at this point. All of Ivan's hope of a viable heir lay with Dmitri, as his only other surviving child, Theodore, was sickly and weak-willed. However, Dmitri was considered illegitimate, as the Orthodox Church did not bless Ivan's marriage to his mother. Maria outlived Ivan, who died in 1584, but she was not granted any property in his will. However, Ivan's infant son, Dmitri, was given possession of Uglich, and Maria was allowed to live off the proceeds from this land. After Ivan's death, Theodore treated Dmitri as illegitimate and did not recognize him as an heir, forcing him, his mother Maria, and his uncles to leave the court and move to Uglich. As Dmitri grew up, his contemporaries found him to be a malicious and violent boy. In 1591, Dmitri was found dead in the courtyard of his palace, with his throat cut. The prevailing theory is that he died from a self-inflicted wound while having an epileptic seizure. Maria was convinced that her son had been murdered and persuaded the people of Uglich to set upon and kill those she thought had been sent to murder her son. An official investigation concluded that Dmitri died during a seizure and that Maria had unlawfully killed people by falsely accusing them. She was sent to a monastery where she lived under the name Martha. In 1605, she legitimized someone pretending to be her son so he could take the throne. Maria died in 1608, having lived through two people claiming to be her dead son and the exhumation of her actual son's body. Ivan the Terrible has gone down in history as a violent and wrathful man, but he also experienced profound love through his first wife. Perhaps his legacy would have been different had Anastasia survived. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history? impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events. If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about Ivan the Terrible, check out our book, Ivan the Terrible, a captivating guide to the first Tsar of Russia and his impact on Russian history. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you found the video captivating, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.